we put a bell siphon in our rain gutter to charge a smartphone with the rain. Now we're tackling some of the biggest issues and letting it run all winter to see if it can do the job. But let's be clear, with only a single watt of power, we can forget about ever powering a house with this thing. Woohoo! For example, in a previous video, we found that single watt is too little to charge most smartphones directly. So instead, we're trickle charging a battery that when full, can quickly charge a phone overnight. But we also learned sometimes the rain really does come down ah! enough to flood our charging station. So our first step is to make a reliable overflow system to handle it. All right, note to self, gotta work out an overflow. That means it's time to get out the ladder and leaf blower to get the gutter completely clean. Now people keep asking in the comments why I don't just install some kind of gutter protection to keep these things clean and the answer is because I'm cheap and I don't want to pay for it. Plus, I need access to mess around with siphons and stuff, and any kind of cover is just going to get in the way. But a while back, someone in the comments suggested piling gravel in the gutter to catch the debris, which sounds so simple, I think I have to try it. But I'm using little glass pebbles instead and bagging them up in window screen to keep them in one place. Now that that's done, I'm heating and folding a sheet of plastic we can attach to the gutter with caulk. Once it dries, it should have no problem handling the heaviest rain Mother Nature can throw at us. And we didn't have to wait long to test it. I just woke up to the sound of a monsoon, and I haven't tested this yet. I'm terrified. So we are right at the top of the gutter. It's not overflowing. Let's see what it looks like at the overflow. We would not want it to get much higher than this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nailed it! <clears throat> Man, my throat. Look at that. We are right at that level. I'd say that's perfect. It's doing its job. You can see there's just a little bit of, of water dripping down in there so it allows the water to get to a maximum height but if anything happens if it got plugged up which I should do I should force that thing just to, to plug up on the other end and watch it overflow over here just to make sure maybe it's not low enough I do see a little bit of look at that it is overflowing just a little bit I put magnets on here Yeah, okay. Look at that. That little that little corner right there. And then, oh, this is the nail that holds the gutter on, and it's submerged. So the water is too high. Over time, it's going to be able to soak the wood behind it where this thing is nailed in. Unless this was completely sealed, uh, it's going to soak and rot out the support. So that's no good. It does need to be lower. So I'd say if we got a half inch half inch lower on that overflow, then we'll be good. It's doing its job. Got nice clean water here. Needles are uh, needles are getting caught by stuff. All right, got a little bit of work to do. No, no disasters, thankfully, but we got some work to do. Okay, the rain stopped. Let's check this out here. So we wanna keep the water below that nail. And if we look at our siphon in fact i can just pull that right off this is why i made these tubes so they can telescope in and out of there you can see i got o-rings down around it so but it looks like that tube if it's doing its job it could be at just the right height to keep the water from going through that little nail hole uh, but we can bump, I won't do it right now, but we can just bump this thing down ever so slightly just to be sure. I'll go ahead and put this back, put our bell back on there. Now let's check the other end. Here's our overflow. So we just need to come in here and cut this thing so that it doesn't get too high on that other end.
Now with the overflow height adjusted, we should be good to go. Except there's one problem. You hear that? Water's running. It's getting past the overflow. The caulk was supposed to be paintable in two hours, but apparently not okay to get in contact with water. This thing is leaking. I tried to cram like a rock or a pebble down in there and see if it would block it, but it's not. So I'm gonna just have to jam the plastic back in here and wait for a dry day. Uh, that's how it goes, prototyping. But once things dried up, I was able to completely redo it and use a hot halogen lamp to help it fully cure. Okay, we're gonna lift this thing off and see what happens. Oh, look at that. The water level is right at the top. You just need to put the tip of this thing a little bit lower. I think I need a wrench. Okay, so this O-ring has a little stick to it. We're just gonna twist it to break it free and then push it down into the water. Come on, go down. Oh, <laughs> that right there, my friends. That's what we want. This is so perfect. We've got the water level below the lowest nail, so we're not going to uh, we're not going to rot out the wood that's holding the gutters on. And we talked about how that outlet, the top of it, sets the. <laughs> Did you hear that? Listen to the suction. Sorry. Cool little sounds. <laughs> anyway, so we've adjusted that top portion to fit exactly where the height of our water is gonna come up to. And now without the bell on there, it would just basically drain down to where the water wasn't meeting the top anymore. So let's add the bell and watch. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool to see. And what that also means, there we go. So now, anytime water gets higher than the siphon, if it uh, if it starts to go crazy, it'll just back up and flow down this guy. And yes, I would love to have another generator hooked up on this, but uh, that's gonna have to wait for another day. This is absolutely ridiculous. It is raining so hard. Got to keep an eye on this thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely using the overflow now. I mean, it, the, there's no way that this rain is only two gallons a minute. We are running, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, so we are we are at our the rate we were shooting for. Woo! And the overflow is doing its job, keeping the water level where it's supposed to be, out of those nails. Wow. Oh shoot, look at that. Right there. So with this super high flow. It's a good thing we made it a little, uh, made that overflow a little lower than we thought that we needed it. Okay, so this is one of those moments. Look at all that water that's getting down. Oh, lost power. So, yeah, this this would be perfect. This would be one of those times where we could be making power off of all that water that is running down in there. We're, we're losing it. This is a peak moment when, if we put all the work into making another alternator and another Pelton wheel and another jet, <laughs> that we could be probably doubling our power output because, I mean, good grief. That's a lot of flow. That's That's gotta be 
close to two gallons a minute, just like we're getting on the other end. I just don't see that happening though. Maybe, we'll see. Oh, it's raining even harder now. Jeez. All right, I'm going inside. <laughs> this is bad. That turned out to be one of the rainiest days of the year, which made for a great time lapse cycling up and down throughout the day. But while Western Oregon gets its share of wet days, we get cold and dry ones too. Well, I guess this shouldn't be too surprising. <laughs> it got below freezing last night. So uh, yeah, that's what's gonna happen. You got a water reservoir sitting out here and it can freeze. Doesn't seem like it's in any damage, so, huh. But seeing the sun in Oregon is the surest sign it's about to rain. It's 4.30 in the morning. It sounds like it's raining cats and dogs. I'm a little f worried of what I'm gonna find. Hey, look at that, clean, doing the job. Okay, this kind of sucks. Look at this. So we're down to a quarter inch of water on this side, on the suction side. But we're building up so much stuff over here, so much garbage, that, oh my goodness, that is a lot. That's a lot of water that is not getting used, but it could be making power right now. And it's not. So, yeah. This, uh, this screen thing, I mean, it's great. It's, keep, it's keeping it clean. Like a lot of filters, we're paying for filtration with, uh, with flow. Yeah, okay. We'll deal with that. Well, it's, at least it's working. But as I contemplated what to do about our clogging filter, look what I stumbled on at the hardware store. Now I've researched about every gutter filter system available and they all have their pluses and minuses, but at two bucks a foot, this stuff is so cheap and easy to use, I can't help but make an impulse buy, try it out and let you know what I find. But little did I know, while I was preparing for debris, mother nature had other ideas. Oh, <laughs> I can't even see it. Wow. Fortunately, while the town of Beaverton gets above average rainfall, Snow only comes once a year, meaning I didn't have to wait long for it to begin to melt. Oh no, we are totally, oh, get off of there. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It's like, it is frozen solid. That is completely locked in. Oh no. I was, I was hoping we would get some of this melting snow. We'd make some power out of it. We got nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's, it's, if you're expecting frequent snowing and thawing, this is not the way to go. Gotta come up with something else. Ugh. Thankfully, it was only a couple more days before the snow completely disappeared. And not long after, I got this pleasant surprise. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think it's finally charged! Ah, uh, okay, we have all four lights, are blue. We're pegged out, it's not taking any current. And this thing is loaded all the way up. And the thing is smoking. It's not even slowing it down. Okay, so if we flip to auxiliary and give it a load, 
that slows it down. We're actually putting a load on the Pelton wheel and it's able to generate power. And then now, let's see, let's test this one more. So we've had given the, the thing, the battery a chance to sit for a sec. Now let's flip it back, flip it back to charge. Okay, so it's right at that, just, just like if you were unplugging your phone and, and plugging it back in or anything that you're charging, you unplug it for a second and then uh, plug it back in and it starts just, you know, trickle charging that, that little bit off the top. So it's sitting there at, uh, what, five and a half, almost six volts and putting in, uh, let's see, 50, 80 uh, milliamps. So, oh, it, okay, it topped it off. It topped it off. Sweet. So now we can charge the phone. We're going to do that tonight. We're absolutely going to do that tonight and charge a phone. Awesome. Okay, here it is. Fully charged from the rain. We ran this thing dead and then hooked it up to the rain getter. And it took a while, but it is fully charged. And now we have the phone at 15% battery. Let's hook this thing up and charge okay we'll see you in the morning all right it is early the next morning this should be the first ever rain gutter charged phone completely charged with rain gutter electricity let's see how did we do wake up 91 percent sitting here so it already fully charged and well, I'm guessing since it's not charging with it anymore, it's at some point during the night fully charged and now it's draining down. The only question is now, what do we do with it? Whoa, what's happening to the screen? What the? Hello? Did you fart, Ray? Fart. Did you fart? Fart. Oh, man. Look at this. Singing in the rain, just singing in the rain on me, rain, rain, rain on me, rain, rain. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. We missed you. Uh. Uh oh. Oh, I almost forgot. Some of you probably want to know how that gutter stuff worked out. Well, like all gutter filters, it doesn't magically make the debris go away. Some of it, especially pine needles, ended up sitting on top of the filter. But no big deal. I just grabbed the blower and cleaned the worst of it off. Okay, so how did it do for filtering? Well, some stuff did still find its way through, which if you just want to keep your downspouts from clogging is probably fine. For my system, that stuff will surely find its way into my nozzle and clog it up, so a pricier screen system <laughs> may be a better bet. But it did keep my system cleaner than anything I've done so far. Now, if you like watching an engineer test crazy ideas that most people would never try, be sure to like, subscribe, look for me on Patreon, and that way I'll see you in the next video.